Hey guys, this is the laser trip wire. I used double sided tape to tape the sensor and the alarm onto the wall. As you can see, the sensor is extended away from the circuit board. This makes it a lot easier to adjust the sensor and I will show you guys how to do that in the video. On the other side is a small mirror to reflect the light back to the device. You can use double sided tape also to mount this onto the wall. So if your roommate was to sneak up on you at night and pull a prank on you, this is what would happen. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own laser trip wire. First you'll need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You'll need a small mirror to reflect the laser. You'll need a 5 volt power supply. Mine has a 2.1 millimeter output for convenience. I can just plug the power outlet into this adapter that goes right into the breadboard. You're gonna need a laser diode. Mine has an internal resistor built in so I don't need to connect an external one. You're gonna need a 555 timer. You'll need a photo resistor. This one is the GL5549, but really anyone will work. Last, you'll need a buzzer. This one is an active buzzer, so we don't need to provide a signal for it to generate sound. This is the schematic for our project. Here we have the 5 volt power supply, which we'll be using to power an entire circuit. The 555 timer will be configured such that if pin 2 drops below one third of the input voltage, then the output will go high and the buzzer will sound. So if pin 2 remains above two th one third, then the output will be low and the our buzzer will stay quiet. We can do this by using a voltage divider. If the laser is hitting on the photoresistor, then the resistance will go low and 10,000 will dominate over the total resistance. And if we break the beam, then the resistance will go to about 2 million, and 10,000 over 2 million is definitely less than one third. And our output will go high, and the buzzer will sound. What we have here is pin 4, which is used to reset the alarm once it has gone off. Since we don't want the alarm to be going off while we're assembling the circuit, we're going to connect it to ground. And once we're ready to activate our, our alarm system, we're going to remove it from ground, and our alarm will be activated. Pin 5 isn't used, so we're going to leave it unconnected. Pin 6 works with pin 2 to produce the right output, and for this configuration, we need to connect it to ground. Pin 7 isn't used, so we leave it unconnected. Pin 8 is the power for the 5-5 timer, so we can connect this to the 5 volt power supply. Over on this side, we have the laser module. Since the laser module that we're using has an internal resistor built in, we can just connect the positive to the positive and the negative to ground. And if you're using your own laser diode, I recommend that you connect a re resistor in series with your laser diode to prevent it from drawing too much current and pot potentially damaging your laser diode. The first thing we want to do is put tin foil around the photoresistor so that we can disperse the laser around it. But before you do that, make sure you put some tape around the terminals so that you can prevent the tinfoil from shorting the two terminals of the photoresistor. Next, you can take a piece of cardboard and poke two holes through it and put the resistor right through. This will act as a support for the tinfoil so that it can hold better. Next, we're gonna find some tinfoil and we're gonna use the shinier side of the tinfoil um, to reflect the light better. Once you find the shinier side of the tinfoil, poke your resistor through it and try to make this cone shape. Once you're done with that, we can use it to build our circuit. First thing we're going to connect is the power. I prefer connecting the power first because if something was to go wrong while you're assembling your circuit, you can spot it and fix it right away. So next pin is pin number 8 which goes on 8 and power supply. So the next pin we have is pin number 2. We're going to take one terminal of our photoresistor and put it into pin number 2. And the other terminal we're going to put it into the positive, like in our schematic.
Now we're going to take the 10 kilo ohm resistor and put it into pin number 2. On the other end, we're going to put it into ground. If you guys can see. So now let's find our buzzer and connect it to the breadboard. The longer side is the positive and the shorter side is the negative. So just find any open slot and plug it into your breadboard. Now we're going to connect the negative to the ground. Since we don't need the output right now, we're going to move on to pin 4. Pin 4 is the reset and we're going to connect it directly to ground. This is how we're going to reset the alarm once it has gone off. So pin 5 isn't used, so we're going to leave that unconnected. Next we have pin 6, and that's going to be connected to ground. Pin 7 isn't used, so we're going to leave that unconnected. Okay, so this is how our circuit looks so far. We're almost done. The last thing we're going to connect is the output. Now that everything's connected, we can test out our circuit by unplugging the reset pin. Yep. So the alarm went off because there's no light hitting the photo sensor, which is exactly what we expect. Now we're going to power on the laser and test out the complete circuit. So now I'm going to use this small piece of mirror to reflect the light back into the sensor. Once you have the laser hitting the photo sensor, you can remove the reset pin and your alarm will be activated. If you guys have a switch or a button, use it to connect pin 4 to ground. It'll be much more convenient than using a piece of wire to reset your alarm. Now if I use my hand to block the laser, the alarm will go off. And to disable it, just put reset back to ground. This next part here is completely optional. I extended the length of the photoresistor so that I can put it to the place exactly where the laser was hitting. It made it a lot easier to set up. You guys can feel free to come up with any ways to make your own setup easier. Okay, so now my trap is set and if anyone walks by then the alarm will start ringing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.